Congratulations on your purchase of a new Briggs & Stratton snow thrower. It's important that you read and follow the setup and operator's manuals when setting up and operating your unit. You will require the following tools to assemble your new snow thrower. A torque wrench, a Phillips screwdriver, an air gauge, a pliers, a side cutting pliers, a 10 millimeter and a 13 millimeter wrench, and a cloth for checking oil level. Begin by removing all packaging materials. Remove the zip ties securing the handles, being careful to not cut the heated hand grips. Partially install the bolts into the lower holes on the frame. Line up the lower holes on the handle assembly and frame. And install, but do not tighten the hardware on both sides. Tip the handle assembly back so it rests on the ground. Cut the zip tie and remove the packaging holding the cables. Install the traction drive control cable. Make sure the traction drive cable is routed under the lower section of the handle. Now install the auger control cable. Make sure the auger control cable is routed over the lower section of the handle. Note that the cable adjusters are set at the factory and require no adjustment. Ensure that the adjuster is above the bolt head so it does not get caught under the bolt head when lifting the handle. Lift the handle to align the upper holes. And install the hardware, tightening all four wing knobs securely. Check that the cables are routed as shown. Then, check the tension on both cables. Cables should deflect slightly with moderate finger pressure. If an adjustment is needed, refer to the operator's manual. Begin chute installation by inserting the chute rotation rod through the dash panel into the mating gear. Next, align the chute support with the welded bracket on the impeller housing making sure to align the chute over the chute opening. Now, install the chute hardware and nuts, but do not tighten. Rotate the chute crank to ensure the rod is rotating freely. Tighten both nuts and torque the nuts to 12 foot-pounds with a torque wrench. Install the deflector cable by moving the deflector control all the way forward and crank the chute control clockwise until it stops. Thread the deflector cable through the wire hanger on the engine and fit the cable end into the hole on the deflector bracket strap. Tip the deflector down and slide the cable into the chute bracket. Adjust the cable so that it is taut between the deflector and chute brackets. Tighten the lower nut first. Then, tighten the top nut securely. Slide the rubber boot over the threaded rod. Check the function of the deflector by moving the deflector lever through its positions, ensuring the deflector moves accordingly. Install the speed control rod by pushing the speed control lever all the way forward. Attach the upper control rod to the bracket and fasten the hardware. Next, attach the lower control rod with spring to the speed control arm and fasten the hardware. Note that the rod adjuster is set at the factory. No adjustment is necessary. Next, install the steering cables by removing the mounting screws and fastening each cable to its respective handle. Secure the steering cables to the handle assembly and frame with the provided clips.
To connect the wire harness, fasten the electrical connection. If your unit has a mounting bolt, remove the bolt with an 8mm wrench and attach the harness to the engine. Secure the harness to the handle with two zip ties. Adjust the skid shoes by placing a wood block of a thickness equal to the desired ground clearance. Use less clearance for a hard surface and more clearance for a gravel surface. Loosen the skid shoe nuts to adjust the height. Tighten the four nuts with a torque wrench to 12.5 foot-pounds. Check and adjust the tire pressure. The maximum pressure is stamped on the sidewall of the tires. Be sure you do not exceed this pressure. Over-inflating tires may cause them to explode, which could result in serious injury. If an oil bottle was supplied with your unit, add the entire bottle to the unit. If no oil bottle was supplied, your unit was filled at the factory before shipment. Check the oil level by placing the snow thrower on a level surface and removing the dipstick. Keep the oil level within the operating range. Refer to your operator's manual for your unit's oil specifications. This snow thrower contains a rotating auger and impeller to throw snow. Fingers or feet can quickly become caught in the auger, resulting in traumatic amputation or severe laceration. Be sure to test the operation of the unit regularly. If the unit fails to operate as described, do not operate it. See your authorized dealer for service immediately. Begin by testing the auger impeller control. With the engine running, press down on the auger control lever. The auger impeller should rotate. Then, release the auger control lever. The auger impeller should stop within five seconds. Now, test the traction drive control. With the engine running and speed control in first gear, press down on the traction control lever. The unit should move forward. Now, release the traction control lever. The unit should stop. And finally, Test the freehand control. With the engine running, engage the auger and traction control levers. Then, release the auger control lever. Both controls should remain engaged. Next, release the traction control lever. Both controls must release if the unit is working properly. Your snow thrower is also equipped with a cleanout tool. You should always use this tool if the unit becomes plugged or jammed but never clean out the equipment when the engine is running. For further information, refer to your setup and operator's manuals or go to BriggsAndStratton.com.